What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill and in today's video we have some IAG internal dome lights. Now Matt's out here again hanging out. A while ago we did a video of installing the prototype lights and his Bronco. So this installation is going to be a little bit different. Uh, they've taken feedback from the prototypes. Everything's nicely packaged now. Um, and open it up got a nice fancy wiring harness and some lights now these lights are for the soft top only uh, however if you have a hard top or if you have a hard top prep package um, you will have brackets up here which I don't have installed which block the uh, which block how those lights sit there. So they do sell an additional package for, for hard tops or if you have a hard top prep kit uh, that moves those out slightly. We're not gonna do that with this one. We're just gonna do the soft top kit install. Uh, I ta I've taken the brackets off of mine. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead, dig into this and uh, They've got a nice QR code there that you can scan for instructions, but it should be fairly simple. We'll find out though. We're gonna get started. We're gonna take these plastic pieces down. That side's already down because these clips get worn out if you're not careful with them. And then there's three bolts, eight millimeter, I believe. It might be seven. Three bolts along this back piece and then two along this front piece that we need to take off. Uh, so we'll take the back off first because that covers this and then we can take that off. That just comes right off. And then same thing with that front panel. Off as well. Pop that piece out and that'll just be retained. Now do the same thing on the driver's side. Next step is take this small wiring harness and we're going to connect this ground to this bolt right here. It's another eight millimeter. And you are messing with the airbags around the airbag so it's a good idea to disconnect the uh the negative well anytime you're working with power but uh especially if you're working around the airbags it's always a good idea to disconnect the negative ground from your uh battery but that's going to get tucked back behind this connection and we're going to put that ground in there I'm going to go ahead and tighten that back down. And then I'm going to just kind of run this towards the back behind the and we'll have one connection right about here. And the other connection right back there. Now that's where we'll be connecting our, our lights. All right, so now we've got the rest of the wiring harness. There's this plug here and it splits off into two. This is going to come down the pillar and to our fuse box. And this side is going to run across to the passenger side. Then I'm going to wedge myself in here now so this side is going to wedge up here and connect to the ground we already connect it it's going to plug in to itself now this piece 
we're going to try to wedge up under there. Now, having a pry tool would probably help here. So I just use a plastic pry tool to kind of pull this down so we can And I'm gonna run this back behind the airbag as well. Ouch. And we can push our one plug up. And our second plug. All right, now on this end, it's got a tap. We're gonna go ahead and pull that off of there both of those just so we don't get them lost uh, as we're trying to fish this thing through and it makes it easier to fish through without them. Now all I'm trying to do is pull this weather stripping out a bit. This thing is annoying, but I don't want to disconnect it either. <laughs> I did is pull this back the airbag back or it's running this cord in through here and then out and then now we can run it down along here I'm going to take this handle off and this panel and then we can tuck it back behind there yeah tucked it back behind here behind this piece just push this this weatherproofing just comes right down if you pull on it and then stuff's back in there. Now we have this amount of cable. Let me just pull this open. And run this back in here. Hopefully. Oh, that's where our finger is. And, oh, let me hide my secure card code. But, uh, yeah, and then, so here we are at the fuse box, and we need to splice into a wire that's on here. Um, it is not easy to get to I do remember that from when we did maps that it is this top wire ring harness here and to get that off you gotta push this little indent down here and you can slide that back 
and it'll disconnect it. Now it does not give you a whole lot of extra wiggle room there to play with. But we need to take a look at the harness there and find a purple wire with a gray stripe on it. So uh, it's hard enough to do this as is, much less with the camera showing you. So I'm going to get in there and locate that wire and then uh, show you how I tapped onto it. All right, so I'm trying to show you this back here. I just stuck a screw in there to kind of separate the wire. So the wire running right on top of that screw. It's gray with a purple stripe. Um, probably not wise, probably not best practice to use a metal screw for separating your wires. But I just happened to have one laying here from when I took the handle off. So using that. And now just use this little so yeah we'll just use this and just this slides over the wire will go in there it won't cut the wire but it'll actually cut through the insulation to where it's touching the wire so then we could just plug into that and get power from it now i know when we did mats we did not squeeze this hard enough and we thought we did something wrong it turned out we just had to go back and squeeze this a little bit harder so make sure you really clamp down on that with some pliers. Uh, the trick is just getting that onto the wire and I can't really show that because there's barely enough room to do it much less do it with the camera so that's all we're doing putting that on that gray wire with a purple stripe and then clamping that down on it so then we can plug in into that. So now we got that on there you probably can't see it we just plug this end here right into the end of that and we should have power going to our lights. We have this other tap here, if you wanna run it to an upfitter switch or in our case, my case, uh, all my upfitter switches are spoken for, so we might add an additional switch. We'll figure that out. But for right now, I'm just gonna plug this in, plug this wire back, hold harness back in, and then we'll get to adding the light. Now, each of these lights has its own little plug and should just plug in right here, like so. And hey, we got lights on, a light on. So I think we're doing something, we did something right. Of course, uh, key close that door and I'll close this one. <laughs> Let's uh, make sure this light goes out when we close the door. All right, so there's two different lights. There's one with the shorter bracket on it, and then here there's the longer one. Has IAG branding. This goes in the rear. Now that we've seen that they're working, we can kind of plug them in as we're putting all the trim pieces back together. All right, so now as we're putting this back together, we're going to line this hole up, kind of tuck the wire back behind there. Try to at least. <laughs> and then we got our handle as well. to be stubborn. And that's what's going to hold this front light in is this screw here as you're screwing this piece back in. And we got our handle back and we've got our first light in. We'll move to the back and wire up that rear light. Now back here in the back this 
plug this in and there's a little lip on there that's where this will catch let's plug that in we have our rear light Now this is going to get use this wire or this hole here. You have rear handles. Yes, I think I had. I don't know if I had them. Yeah, I had them back here because. Gotcha. They already had the handle there. I was like, oh well, that, that seemed too close to that. I had to think about it. Because I did put them up here originally and then went back and forth a couple of times. And I was like, ah, oh, no, I like it back here because of that handle being already there. All right, so. And there's your front and rear light on this side. I said if you have that bracket sticking out, this would hit it. Uh, so they have an extension bracket which will move the light back a little bit here. Um, so if you have the hardtop prep kit or a hardtop, just be sure you order the extra brackets that they, they have available. Which will, it, it moves this light forward and it moves this light back a little bit just so it clears that bracket. But uh, if you have a soft top or don't have that bracket, then it installs just like that and fits right in there. couple of screws all right and that's it um this side's done we'll go ahead and do the other side it's the same exact steps uh so yeah once we get everything put back together we'll take a look at it all for the upfitter switch or whatever switch you want to use they also provide another crimp on thing i'm just passing a wire through this is the rubber grommet that's in the firewall there i just slid it back along this wire to make this easier so we'll crimp that on, we'll put this plug back in, and then we'll have this wire on that side and be able to plug that in. And then this wire, I'm just going to the yellow and orange. They say yellow and orange, it looks like yellow and red to me, but whichever, uh, which is the upfitter switch wire for switch six, which I don't currently have anything on. That way, flip the switch and turn those lights on or off as needed or open the door but let me uh, get my crimping tool and put this on there and we'll get it connected crimp the end on there nice and snug just gonna push that through slide this grommet down because I slid it up here for easier access slide it back down on the cable some feed it through If you push it through to that side, it's got little tabs that you can pull on to actually pop it into place. And you just push it through and then kind of pull back on these tabs and it seats it all the way around. And you got a nice tight seal there. We'll then cut our wire here. Well, let me make sure I got enough wire inside first. Okay, so on the inside, just plug that crimped in into the other end of the uh, the wiring harness that they supplied. Now on this side, just gonna cut our wire and then do a butt connector right onto that one and then we should have a switch. And we get her a little And if we did everything right, we should have a powered switch. Okay, so we're in, we got power on, our lights are off, our lights are on, lights are off, lights are on, nice. Now if we open the door, lights, 
And I noticed with the door open and closed, it kind of fades in and fades off, but with the switch, it's just right on, right off. But the door kind of fades in and out. But that is definitely much more light than we had in here. Uh, I have to come out and show what it looks like once it's dark out. Which is hard to do with a GoPro because they are horrible with low light. So if you can see when we come out here at night with these lights, with that camera, then you know there's a lot of light. <laughs> All right, so it is dark. And you can not see <clears throat> really anything. But we open up the uh, Bronco and there is plenty of light in here now. I said earlier, the GoPros are horrible in low light, but you can still see really well. <laughs> out here with these so very happy with these lights i was jealous after we installed them in in mats when we installed the prototypes it's almost a year ago i guess but now i finally got the uh the new version of these that iag came out with close the door everything turns off but yeah super happy with them uh like i said i did the prototypes for matt and Matt's Bronco uh, quite a while ago. It seems like it was almost a year. They definitely made some improvements. Uh, the wiring harness is a little easier to work with. The mounts, everything, uh, the plugs, everything's just a little bit better polished than it was originally. So uh, I think AEG did a great job with them. Definitely something that the Bronco needed was better interior lighting. They did a great job with that. I was very happy to see that they're available now. I said, if you have the hard top, you do need the extra brackets. Um, they're a, an additional charge. They're not crazy expensive. Um, if you don't have those bracket, if you don't have a hard top or the hard top package, then you could just use the, uh, you don't need the additional brackets. If you do have a hard top prep kit, it's just three bolts that hold these plates on. And you just take those off and then you don't need the additional brackets. Uh, that is if you're not ever planning on using a hard top. But um, just going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Uh, you probably can't even see me right now. So let's flip this switch on. It's super bright in here. Plenty of lighting. Yeah, turn that off.